Hello, host Eric here, host of Talking with Famous People, and I just got off the phone with famous debater Edmund, Big Edmund, Senpai, and we discussed our ongoing battle with Temple City High School over the debate thing. Well, the reason he called, or the reason I asked him to call me, because he texted me saying, what should I do, and I said, call me, and we talked about it, is because Connie's school has moved up the deadline to for when to when the waiver needs to be submitted to Santa Margarita. And this is Santa Margarita's waiver primarily because their school says, yes, you can do this, but I need per- you're the principal of the other debater to give permission. Why? Well, because I think primarily because these administrators tend to think of the students as their resource, you know, which is, which is weird. But and they think, well, I don't want to steal this other guy's resource. And I, I get that because as a debate coach, I tend to think of my debaters as my resources as well. But the thing is, to the extent that they are, my, my position is always. First and foremost, I have to earn the right to keep you. If I'm not doing a good enough job, if you're not happy with me, I encourage you to go someplace else. Because I I don't want to keep you by any means other than by providing you services that you think are well worth the money. And you think, you know, I'd like to have you on my squad because you think I'm the best coach. That's the reason I want you on my squad. That's the reason I want you to be want to be on my squad. It's not, it's not the, uh, not the only reason why somebody might choose to be on my squad, but it's the reason I would like, ideally, is to have my debaters think I'm the best coach, and that's why they're on my squad. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't crash here. <sighs> okay, so crashing avoided, averted, crash averted, crashing avoided. Uh, so anyway, I think this this debate matter with Temple City High School is an excellent provides an excellent vehicle to explain the way that different kinds of approaches to life play out in different ways in a circumstance that can be approached in a number of different specific ways and has a specific outcome as a desired end. So, when we're facing a situation like this, in the last previous video, I already discussed how you need to go in, you need to go in with offense, right? Not just defense. You need to go in as the uh, one asserting the asserting a duty upon trying to confer a duty upon the other, not the one who's saying who's trying to request from authority. That's a bad position to come from. So that's the first video I talked about that one. In this, in this instance, what happened is they pushed forward the deadline. We need to get that waiver signed today if he's going to compete at all. If he is going to compete for Santa Margarita with Connie in this tournament, then he'll need to get that waiver signed. And this is a complicating factor in the whole debate team for Temple City High School set of argumentation. Because it does a lot of different things, right? It shows that there is an alternative, at least in theory, to Temple City having a debate team. They could sort of farm out their debaters to compete for other schools. It would require a tournament by tournament waiver thing like this, though. You have, you have to sign a waiver each time. Or, I guess if you wrote a, if you wrote a thorough enough waiver that said, this covers for the whole year, yeah, yeah. Then that would probably work as well. Um, and that, and so, I'm hesitant to encourage Edmund to pursue the waiver because I think of the ways in which it undermines our position on the other thing. However, I also realize that she's unlikely to try to assert that as a viable solution to the problem because if she were to assert that as a viable solution to the problem, I would say in response. So, do you believe then that farming out your students 
to other schools to compete for their teams is a better solution than the one I'm proposing. Because I'm suggesting a solution that has you reaping the benefits in terms of community pride, status, or whatever else you get out of this, uh, of having national champions, at least being in competition for it, it it's going to mean a lot. It's going to mean a lot. People who, who pay attention quickly realize that the debate program in a school with a successful debate program is the heart of the academic engine in some sense. It's like where the most advanced work is going on and, and shit trickles down. It does trickle down, absolutely, because debaters go into classes and instead of just just taking in what their teacher is saying, they challenge it on various grounds and then the other students learn to do that as well and then everybody improves. It's the nature of things. But regardless of that, what do we do with this circumstance? So she's in a position now to cause us, at least is going to be positioned as to cause us harm. As I've indicated to Edmund, I don't think it hurts us one bit for us to, for her to either drag her feet and not get the waiver done in time, or for her to just simply flat out refuse to sign the waiver. Either either action probably helps our cause. However, if she does sign it, that doesn't necessarily hurt our cause for the reasons I indicated. And it does show her the fact that he needs to get a waiver signed right now reminds her that this isn't a matter with a certain amount of time sensitive. Now, the reality is that it has less time sensitivity than we're going to portray it as having because there's no real urgency to compete at these first early tournaments of the year. The real urgency comes towards later in the year when you get into the big tournaments and stuff like that. But, and, and, it's, and it's not like Edmund is competing for TOC this year. If he were trying to get bids, TOC bids, then that would be a different story. Then it would matter. But we're not, we're not there yet, and that's, so that's fine. But, you know... Regardless, this issue drives home the point that there is time sensitivity. This issue drives home the point that this isn't going to just go away by being ignored because it's an ongoing problem. What, he's already having a problem with this? We just talked last week. Well, actually, we've talked several times. Okay, we've contacted you several times about this. You know, the thing is, my type, my nature, my being, both as an ENTP and just as Eric and as a debater, uh, is tactical. It is not strategic. So I go into this thing like this and I know the outcome I want and I know I know the strength of my case. I know the strength of my opponent's case. I know those things. And I evaluate then I'm more or less correct about about those things, and I, I just as I learn to the extent that I'm wrong, where I need to fix my impressions about their case or about how this is going to play out, right? I, I don't assume anything. I may I may operate on predicted likelihoods, but I'm willing to change course in a second. I'm not attached to my course of action, so. This variable throws in the mix a bunch of new stuff. Great. Now I feel like I've. I don't feel like I need. Oh no, too many variables. I can't figure out a plan. I'm not, I'm not really trying to figure out a plan. I'm just playing it by ear, but I'm musing over the various variables that I can use and how they might play out. And uh, again, still not a plan. If I go in there, it's going to play out differently than I any of the possibilities I anticipated probably at least a little bit differently and there may be some angle I haven't anticipated that she's got it's a really good argument that I haven't anticipated it happens sometimes uh, and then well the thing that doesn't worry me though because I'll adjust on the fly and I know the big framework issues and I can always go up a level of the framework and deal with it there if I have to you know I shouldn't have to in this instance. This is pretty cut and dry. But, uh, so, the reason I'm addressing this tactical issue, this issue of tactics, is in part because of Margie and Jeremiah's 
INFJ fretting. INFJs worry when ENTPs talk big sometimes that they're going to cause some sort of harm. Well, good news. As I told Margie in a comment, I'm more or less girding my loins rhetorically here. I'm preparing myself mentally for the battle, framing everything for myself. It doesn't mean I'm going to come in hard and fast. I may come in real light, you know? It's hard to say. Again, it, it, I'll, I'll know when I'm there and I'm doing it. I don't have a plan. But I talk as though I have a plan because I do have a lot of plans. I just don't have a plan. I, there's nothing specific that I'm going to follow through on, but I've got a lot of angles that I consider and probably will execute. That truck is really annoying. Super in the way. Fuck face. Anyway. Um, so, that's what's going down with that. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, I do understand, you know, Margie says, don't, don't, uh, it says, I got a text that distracted me. Alright. Um, one more time. God damn it. Stupid brain. Stupid brain's so fucking stupid. Okay, well, regardless of that, uh. So, tactics. I'm tactically very flexible. And it's something that I've had problems with my whole life is that when I talk about how things are going to go, people expect that to mean something related to how I'm actually going to behave. And it's frustrating because I don't mean it like that. I'm not saying I'm going to go do this or that. I'm saying here are some possible things that might happen. Or, or here's how, here's one metaphysical reality that I'm going to frame for the purposes of highlighting blah or blah. I mean, maybe blah or blah is not very nice or something, but you know, it's I don't know. I can understand how it's frustrating for others that they can't know ahead of time what I'm going to do or how I'm going to behave or something like that for a lot of things. I have this fight with my partner, my new partner, all the time now, although I like her a lot better than my old partner's. Uh, I mean, I liked Jane a lot. Jane was great, but she, you know. But the thing is, I have this fight with the partner because everybody wants to know what's going to happen. I don't know. I, I know it's a good angle, right? I know it's a good angle of attack. Let's attack there. But what's going to happen? I don't know. Well, then how do you know we should attack there? Because I just said it's a good angle of attack. I know that. I, I, that instinct I can trust for sure. Even if it's a bad angle of attack, my instincts about angle of attack are so good that I can survive through several wrong turns. So it, even if I, my, my very, very well honed angle of attack radar makes a couple of blundery mistakes, I, it, it provides the solution as well. You know, I, I'll find the angle of attack out of that mistake. It's a new set of arguments. Every every new thing that gets stuck onto something makes the whole set of arguments change. And, and people don't understand that, and that's what gives, gives tactical thinkers like ENTPs an advantage in these sort of social tug-of-war kind of Yes. Okay. 14 minutes and 30 seconds, huh? So this is about a 15-minute video. Probably put this one up unedited. It feels reasonably clean. The beginning was kind of a little rambly. This end part may be a little too meta. I don't know. I like to end right at a nice even number, so i got about 13 more seconds here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. And believe it or not, I am totally on time for work. How nice is that?